So this is the 2016 Junior Cert Higher Level Paper 1 and we're looking at question number 5. Part A says the graph below shows the distance travelled along a track by Anne over the course of a race. The graph is in two sections labelled A and B. So we can see section A here and section B here. And along the X or the horizontal axis we have the time and seconds. And up the y-axis, the vertical axis, we have the distance travelled along the track, and that's in metres. So, part one says, show that Anne's speed in section A is 5 metres per second. So let's have a look at section A. Section A starts here, and finishes here. So we can see that for that section, A has taken 60 seconds and in that time she's covered a distance of 300 meters so with that information we've defined show that her speed is five meters per second well speed is equal to distance divided by time that's the formula you should know so our distance is 300 meters and our time is 60 seconds and 300 divided by 60 gives us 5 and it's meters per second. So we've shown and speed. Part 2 says find and speed in section B in meters per second. So let's have a look at section B. Starts from here and ends up here. Okay, so in section B her distance, she goes from 300 meters up to 400 meters, so that's a distance of 100 meters. And she does that distance in 60 to 100 seconds, so that takes 40 seconds. So her time is 40 seconds and her distance is 100 meters. So her speed, which is distance over time, is equal to 100 over 40. And we put that on the calculator, that gives us 2.5 meters per second. So that's on speed in section B. Okay, part B says table one shows the graphs of the distance traveled along the track by Bill, Claire and D during the same race. So here's table one, Bill, Claire, and D down below. Each person's name is written next to their graph. Table two shows the graphs of the speed of Bill, Claire and D during the race. So table one is distance, table two is speed. It says complete table two by writing the correct name next to each graph. Okay, so if we have a look at these here. If we look at uh, Bill's distance time graph first. We can see that as time goes by, the distance Bill is traveling in relation to that time is increasing. So that means his speed is increasing as time goes by. If the distance is more as time goes by, his speed is increasing. So if we look at these three graphs, we can see that the second graph here is the one where the speed is increasing as time goes by, which means that this here is Bill. Okay, so if we look at Claire's distance time graph, we can see that as time goes by, Claire's distance is changing at the same rate. It's a linear relationship, straight line. So if her distance is changing at a linear rate in relation to her time, it means her speed is constant, her speed is not changing. So that would be this first graph here. You can see as time goes by, her speed is remaining constant. But this would be Claire's speed time graph. And that leaves D's graph to be down the bottom. And we can see for D as, just to confirm, as time goes by, her distance is, her distance begins to become less and less the distance that she's covering, which means that she's slowing down so her speed is decreasing, which is this graph here. OK, 
Okay, so part C says the graph below shows the distance Eric traveled along the track during the same race. So here's the graph of Eric's distance versus time. <clears throat> and we're asked to sketch the graph of Eric's speed during the race on the axes below. So we can kind of see here that there's kind of three main regions. This that's the first region from this blue dot there. Then we've got the second region here, and then the final region. So if we look at them, in the first region here, we can see that as time goes by, the distance that Eric is covering is becoming less and less. So that means the speed would be decreasing. So if he's starting with a speed up here somewhere, we could say that his speed is beginning to decrease, 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 decrease. And then we can see here that eventually the distance he is traveling stops. So as time goes by in this region, he's not covering any distance at all, which means he has stopped. Okay, so his speed would be zero. So this speed flattens out to become zero. So that goes along like that for about the same length of time. And then finally, in the third region, we can see that the distance he's covering begins to increase again as time goes by. And he's covering more and more distance as we move up the graph here in relation to time, which means he's speeding up again. So from this region here, we can say that he begins to speed up, speed up, speed up, speed up, as the distance is increasing. So that would be the speed time graph for Eric. And that's the end of question. Number five.